Well, hi class. So we're back to our second part of the nervous system cells. We talked about the neurons, the most important cells in your body where everything is happening. But there are, are another set of cells called the neuroglia, aka the glial cells, aka just the glia. Now, a lot of places don't spend much time on the glia cells. Um, they're an afterthought, but I love glia cells. I love the neurons too, but the glia cells, these are the cells that are taking care of the neurons. Now, uh, they out one, they outnumber our neurons by at least 10, 10 to one. They're the supporting cells, but there's so many of them. And if they weren't important, there wouldn't be so many of them. And when I, every time I go into a histology section, I always read about histology. And this website by Dr. Thomas, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Kasiki, he has a great histology site that is funny. I mean, I just love reading his histo about any new system. So I'm going to tell you a little bit what he said about the glia cells. Now, which if you look at this picture, this is a scanning electron microscope photo of actual neurons. These big orange blobs, here's some dendrites coming off. Maybe that's an axon. But all these tiny little things that are all over the, the, these neurons and their processes, these are glia cells. There's lots of them just surrounding these neurons. Now in a textbook, you'll see these, these little diagrams. You'll see the neurons and their glia cells. This neuron is hugging this capillary and he's kind of hugging the neuron. This is a diagram. This is what's really going on. So I'm just going to read you a little something about what Dr. Thomas Katsiki said. He goes, the neurons are only one of the two major cell populations of the nervous system. They are by no means the most numerous class. The other pop population, an aggregate of some 10 to 50 times larger in total numbers, are the neuroglia. These are the supportive cells of the system, and there are several types. So this is me with a great student, an anatomy student. Um, and we are showing you our neuron. We called her Nirana. This is Nirana. She represents our neuron. She is needy. Um, she's very specialized. She goes by one name. She's a diva, Nirana. She's, she's just like a diva in that she needs her entourage of supporting cells to take care of her, her very unique needs and demands. So normally I bring out a whole entourage of the glia cells that are there to support our diva. But since we're not in class this semester, I don't have any other pictures other than this one, which is our microglia. But I had a whole entourage that were coming to support our neuron. Now that I've totally bored you with what I think is important about glia cells, let's actually look at them. So glia cells. We already know they are non the non-excitable cells in the CNS. They can't have form electrical impulses, action potentials. They are much smaller than neurons. Neurons are huge. And these glia cells retain the ability to, to divide. So if you are going to have brain tumors or cancers, they're going to be called in the general category of gliomas. It means a tumor of one of the glia cells. 
they outnumber neurons by at least 10 to 1, some places say 50 to 1. They make up half of the brain mass. So if they make up half of the brain mass, they must be important. Now, there are only six types of glia cells, four in the CNS, in the central nervous system, and two in the peripheral nervous system. So we're going to start with the neuroglia of the CNS. Now, astrocytes are the most abundant and largest neuroglia cells. In class, we would call these neurons personal assistant. Whatever neur the neuron or neurona wants, Mr. Astrocyte will get it for her. The microglia is the healthcare professional that keeps neurona healthy. These microglia are actually phagocytes in the CNS. Oligodendrocytes, these are Nirana's myelinators. We'll talk about myelination. He keeps her moving fast. Those electrical impulses have to move fast. And epidymal cells? Well, epidymal cells help supply Nirana with fine, only the finest filtered water. And this is Nirana's own CSF, cerebral spinal fluid. So we'll look at these individually. Astrocyte. Astrocyte. Astro means star. These are our star cells. I've already told you they're, they're the largest and most abundant of the glia cells. These cells take care of the metabolic needs of the neurons. What does that mean? Look at this picture. Here is the neuron. Here is the astrocyte. We've got these feet, they call them perivascular feet, that are covering the capillaries. Remember, capillaries are what are giving our cells nutrients and oxygen. He is covering the neuron cell body here. He is monitoring the neuron. Does the neuron need more oxygen? I've got it for you. Does the neuron need more nutrients, more basically more glucose? I've got it for you. He is controlling this blood supply to the neurona. She needs it. He is there for her. Here is a, a, a histology slide of kind of what the astrocytes look like. I think these are neurons in the background. I can't really tell. This is the blood vessel. So the neurons, these astrocytes are all over those blood vessels, those capillaries um, that are controlling the, the blood flow to our neurons. So it's kind of cool to see it. Once again, here's your, showing you the astrocyte. And basically, these perivascular feet, they are totally covering the capillary, not just partially, but totally covering the capillary. It's not going to be just one astrocyte. It's going to be several astrocytes that are totally covering this capillary. These astrocytes are help, help forming the blood-brain barrier. They are controlling what's going into the neural tissue. That is very important. They're not letting many things into the neural tissue. So remember, astrocytes are help forming that blood-brain barrier. And I just wanted to show you just two minutes of this little video by Allie Astrocyte. She is a young person that is doing um, lots of research into this. So far on neurotransmissions, we've given a lot of attention to the brain's superstars, neurons. Neurons get a lot of attention from researchers and the public. 
Rightfully so, because these are the cells that do all of the communicating to keep us walking and talking. But as I mentioned in our first video, neurons aren't the only brain cells. About half of the cells in your brain are called glia, literally brain glue. For a long time, scientists thought these cells were unimportant, only there to support neurons. But we've been learning that that's definitely not true. Hey there. I'm Allie Astrocyte, and on the next few episodes of Neurotransmissions, we're going to be talking about the underappreciated brain cells. And this week, I get to talk about my favorite cells, astrocytes. Yes. Astrocytes are awesome, but you probably already knew that I like them. Did you know that when researchers looked at Einstein's brain under a microscope, the only difference they could find was that Einstein had a lot more astrocytes than the average person? So there must be something pretty special about them. Astrocytes are named because of how they looked when scientists first saw them through a microscope. The name comes from the Greek astron, meaning star, and kitaro, meaning cell. These starry cells make up a pretty big chunk of the brain. Many scientists estimate that almost half of all glia are astrocytes. They're big and bushy, with lots of teeny tiny super fine branches called processes that touch a lot of neurons. Seriously, one astrocyte can be in contact with thousands of neurons. Scientists have known for a long time that astrocytes are really important for providing nutrients to neurons by shuttling them from the blood vessels to the neurons themselves. They also help buffer, or balance, the ion concentrations in the brain and they're a part of the repair and scarring that happens after brain injury. All of that's pretty important, but not necessarily super interesting, so it's understandable why scientists ignored them in favor of their electrically excitable cousins for so long. But around 20 years ago, researchers began to learn more about these unassuming cells and found out that they were a lot cooler than anyone had previously guessed. So what makes them so cool? Astrocytes can communicate with neurons and play really important roles in the development and stability of synapses. Well, hopefully you got an earful on astrocytes and their importance in the nervous system and taking care of our beloved neurons. Now, the second glia cell that I want to talk to you about is the microglia. Now, these are the smallest glia cells of the CNS, and they are actually macrophages. They are phagocytes of the CNS. And these are real important because of our blood-brain barrier. Our other immune cells from our body cannot have access to the CNS. So these microglia cells are just hanging around, monitoring for any foreign invaders that might be coming in to the environment of our neuron. And if they do sense that there's some foreign invader, um, usually it's bacteria, they will quickly divide and multiply in their numbers. They also phagocyze, clean up any neural de debris, any, any dead parts of the, the neuron um, that need to be cleaned up, they will clean it up. So just think of microglia as the healthcare providers of the neuron, taking care of her environment, making sure there is no bacteria um, that can, can damage her. Now, our myelinators of the CNS. Now, these third glia cells, the oligodendrocytes, oligodendrocytes, a cool name, these cells are producing an insulating cover called myelin sheaths around the axons. Remember, the axon is where the action potential, the electricity is going to be going traveling down to, and then it's going to um, go to these end, end feet or end bulbs where they're going to release the neurotransmitter. So we are going to have myelin over these axons to act as an insulator, a shield. It's, this myelin is a fatty membranous covering that is made by these oligodendrocytes and it prevents the leak, leakage of electrical current. 
So kind of think of it like this. Here is your neuron cell bodies sending electrical impulses down this cord. You want this cord insulated because of the electricity running down it. Same thing with these myelin sheaths. And it's there's a high fat content in the myelin that is going to give it its white cover, white color. So in the CNS, we talked about the gray matter. The gray matter is a high collection of neuron cell bodies, but the white matter of the CNS is going to be where we have these myelinated axons. So kind of cool, but what you need to notice with these oligodendrocytes, here is the cell body of the oligodendrocyte. He is wrapping around the axon with his cytoplasmic processes. So hopefully you can see that. So this one oligo is covering one, two, three, four, five different parts. They call these internodes. This one oligo is, is doing five different internodes of two different neurons. That will become important when we look at the myelinators in the PNS. So kind of cool, huh? So let's go on to our next one. Now our last, our last glia cell of the CNS are the ependymal cells. These are actually sim simple cuboidal to simple columnar in shape and they have microvilli, either microvilli or cilia coming out from them on their apical surface. Their apical surface is facing a, the fluid filled cavities of the CNS where CSF, cerebral spinal fluid, is, is flowing. And we'll talk about more, more about this when we get into the brain cavities, our ventricles, in where the CSF is flowing. But for right now, know that ependymal cells are at the interface of our neural tissue. This brown part is our neural tissue and the cerebral spinal fluid. So we'll talk about those more in detail. So here is just a drawing of um, the four glia cells of your CNS. Here is the neuron, which is not a glia cell, but here is the astrocyte. Here they make the astrocyte look as big as the neuron, and it's not. But here's the astrocyte. It's got its feet all over the, the neuron, and it's got its feet all over the blood supply to the neuron. The microglia are these little guys, the, the, the small little cells. These are phagocytes that are going wandering through the, the nervous tissue of the CNS. Here are the oligodendrocytes, which, which are myelinating the axons. May, remember, myelin is an insulator where the electrical impulses are traveling through those axons. They keep the the conduction speed real fast, real fast, so we can conduct that electricity down that axon. And then our last one was our ependymal cells that have something to do with CSF, and we will look at that a little bit later. Now we're going to do the glia cells of the peripheral nervous system. There's only two. There's only two. The first one is the satellite cell. Now, we, you've actually seen, though, seen these already. Now, satellite cells are surrounding our unipolar neuron cell bodies in the PNS. Remember, we looked at um, our, our unipolar cell bodies when we saw the ganglia, a ganglion. Remember, a ganglion is a collection of cell bodies within the PNS, and I showed that to you. 
If not, go back and look at the first video, a ganglion, a collection of cell bodies within the PNS. And what we were saying was this. Remember this? Here is our unipolar cell body. It's within a ganglion in the PNS. Here's the nucleus, the nucleolus. And then these little dots, see these little dots all around our unipolar cell body? These are satellite cells. These are satellite cells. Here's a, here's a unipolar cell body, and it's got little dots all around it too. All these are cell bodies, unipolar cell bodies in the PNS. And all these little dots are satellite cells. So what they call these, they, I don't know if I got it on the next picture. I think I do. Yeah, here. So here's the ganglion where all these unipolar cell bodies are hanging out. So satellite cells make a ring around the unipolar cell body, like moons around a planet. So they look like little moons around a planet. That's why they call them satellite cells. And they are kind of doing the same function as astrocytes, taking care of the needs of the cell body and keeping her environment um, in the, the right balance for the, these neuron cell bodies. So easy to see. This is I'm trying to think. This is this is the only um, glia cell that you're actually going to see histology slide of, other than you will be able be able to see some myelination going on too. But you won't actually be able to see the cells of the myelinators. You'll just see the myelin. But here is the cell, the satellite cells around our unipolar cell body. Remember? Ganglion. Where unipolar cell bodies are hanging out right here. And our last glia cell in the, the PNS, since there's only two, is the Schwann cells. Schwann cells are the myelinators in the PNS. Now, remember oligodendrocytes can myelinate many sections of an axon and many separate axons with their processes. Got that? Remember that? Their cell body stays outside. Their cell bodies are not part of the myelinating process. Remember? Oligodendrocytes, their cell bodies are not part of the myelin. They are staying outside of their, of their, the myelin. Here's their cell body. Whereas with a Schwann cell, here is a sh one single Schwann cell. Here's the nucleus of the Schwann cell, and here's the cytoplasm. What happens with the Schwann cell? One Schwann cell is myelinating one section of the axon. Here's the axon. And here's the, the, the nucleus of the Schwann cell. So what that means is here is one Schwann cell. In fact, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve individual Schwann cells that is myelinating this, this axon of this unipolar neuron. Now, there are things called the nodes of Ranvier that we're going to look at in the next video. Here is the myelin sheaths, and here's the nodes of Ranvier. Nodes of Ranvier are these gaps in between the myelin sheaths. You can, they're showing up here. Here it's showing you real easy. Here's the myelin sheath, and here's those gaps and nodes of Ranvier. Now we will be able to see these myelin sheaths under the microscope and we'll show you that in the next video. So these are Schwann cells doing the myelination on this axon. 
and here's the nodes of Ranvier. You can have nodes of Ranvier in the CNS too. Here's the oligodendrocytes. Here would be nodes of Ranvier, the gaps in between the myelin sheets. And here is the Schwann cell showing you the nucleus, its cell, its nucleus right here, single Schwann cell, node of Ranvier in the PNS. So hopefully this makes sense. Uh, I have one video, next video is going to show you the nodes of Ranvier and actually an actual nerve and what makes up a nerve. Oh, and before we go, I just, you've probably heard of demyelinating diseases. Demyelinating diseases, the most common is multiple sclerosis, also known as MS. That should be AKA. Uh, multiple sclerosis, these are demyelination in the CNS. So this has something to do with the myelin covers only within the CNS, the ones that are made by the, the oligodendrocytes. So what happens if you do not have this nice myelin cover that is covering, um, insulating that electricity that's going down the, the axon, you are going to get this this electrical conduction is not going to be going down that axon very well that impulse is going to be disrupted and you cannot communicate it causes communication problems between the brain and the rest of your body that is not good so myelin very important so that's it for this video